Hi, welcome to my studio. Happy Mardi Gras season. Let's hang out. Let's get creative. Let's have fun. So I've been a busy bee over here in my studio at home, creating some fun masks for Mardi Gras. Let me get started by showing you what I've been up to. Uh, I have a few different masks going on here and I want to show you different techniques that I've been playing with and how I've built up different masks. Here, let's start with the traditional colors of Mardi Gras, the purple, yellow, and green. And I had a lot of fun playing with feathers on this one. And I just took basic white mask. You can find these at Michael's or Amazon. There's paper and there's plastic ones. I like the paper ones because I like to apply maybe spray paint or regular paint or even watercolor. I suppose the plastic ones you can apply certain things, but I feel like the paper you can apply a lot more mediums. So what I did was I took this outside and I took my gold spray paint. This is just Russ Oleum metallic finish gold from Walmart. If you want to have fun spray painting, always make sure to shake your can for a good couple minutes and to spray from a distance. Don't spray too close, it will get blobby. Give it a nice back and forth misting. Of course I have purple, green, gold, and yellow. This one I spray painted green and had a rubber band over it, which gave it a really interesting line. That's the fun thing about these masks. There's so many ideas, so much fun to be had. You can use just about anything. I love playing in nature. I like to incorporate nature, nature into my work a lot. Here's another one that I made, another mask, with pine needles found on a walk and some other pine and a climbing hydrangea dried flower. But check out the, the spray paint and the pine needles. It's really fun, right? So I thought instead of spraying all of it, leave some green and then just get like the tips. I used a glue gun to attach the branches. A glue gun is essential. If you don't have a glue gun, try to get one. You can use regular glue, but it will take forever to dry. So I highly suggest having a glue gun. You still need to hold it for a second when you use the glue gun and when you're pressing this on here, especially when it, like the, the stick kind of has weight to it and it bends a lot. So what I like to have on hand are clothespins in my studio in my workspace. So if you don't want to hold this, placing a clothespin here is a great uh, way to have it stay in place long enough so that the glue really dries and everything's holding. Here's another one that I did with more of a nature vibe. And by the way, if you don't have a fancy mannequin head like this, paper towel rolls work really well. <laughs> so this one is in in uh, progress too. I haven't done anything with the mask yet. I just really, really loved collecting these leaves from the yard and the climbing hydrangea and then the berries. And what I did with these was I dipped them in Liquitex. It's a kind of a Mod Podge glue solution. So this is my glue mixture. I use like this little tub. You can use the Mod Podge, but what I actually used in here was Liquitex. It's kind of the same thing, except for this is a little bit more professional, higher grade. So this, I put this in here, put a little water, and then I soak the leaves in there and get them all wet. And then I let them dry overnight. And then that way they stay nice and firm and they got like a nice little gloss to them. What you could do is you find some really interesting things from outside in your yard and um, you don't have to dip it in the solution if you don't have anything. You can even just get some ivy. It's more fragile, but it's still really cool looking. Here's some more nature findings that I did soak them in the Liquitex and then let them dry. So the fern could stay green or you could do spray paint or 
regular paint. We could play with some fabrics. So how would that look? You could put them on the edge like this. That's just lovely. And then decorate this. Even if you have fabric scraps, you could cut up little pieces of fabric. You could do like a mosaic kind of thing. So if you want to glue a bundle together, use your glue gun. Think about weight. It's all about seeing how it fits on the mask. Let me show you how to glue it. First, I'm going to glue this one to here, and then we'll put it all on there. You can find glue guns, Walmart, Michaels. So I put the glue on the back, and now I'm going to press it onto this stem. And now I'm going to hold it firmly together for a little bit so the glue will dry. To attach it to the mask, this needs to be on here enough too so it doesn't fall and then not stabilize itself. And I think I'll glue on the back of the, the branch. So I kind of know where I want it, but if it's on the back of here, I can press it in. I'm just going to be aware of that. I don't need glue in between the eye space. Let's go for it. You got to go fast with the hot glue because it, it cools off and dries quickly. Some of you guys might like to fly by the seat of your pants like I do. Some of you might want to plan it out, what you want to do. There you go. The rest is <clears throat> wherever you want to go with it. So next, we got to show you how to do this one. Okay, so we talked about the gold spray painting it. And I'll show you the feathers in a second. But check out the sequence. So here's some sequence around this eye. And I was going to show you how I did it uh, on this eye. I figured out the other night that instead of trying to pick up one sequence at a time and glue it on to go grab some scotch tape. And depending on whether you want to be focused with your colors, like on that mask, I was more Mardi Gras colors. But on here, I could just do random. You want to get your sequence all with the sparkly, pretty side facing up. Then what I do is I kind of arrange them in like a really fun pattern with the really, really small ones and the bigger ones and the medium ones and different colors. Also, what I did is if you want to put them around the eye, you're going to pick them up with the tape. On, on the cardboard, but it makes makes it really easy if you have a template of the eye piece down here. So what I did was I cut out the shape of the, the eye. So I put this down here and then I'm able to line the gems up going around the curve so I can kind of gauge where they're going to be on there. But let me show you how I do it with the tape. So take your tape, press into the, the gems. And you want scotch tape because then you can see through. So I'm thinking I'm going to put it right about here. So then I go with the glue gun and apply some a little dab of glue, like a dot of glue on the back of each rhinestone sequence and hurry up because it dries fast and press it into place where you wanted it. And sometimes things shift on you and change, but you know what? It's okay. It's art. Let it move you. It's better to pick up just a few at a time because the glue dries pretty fast. And I found out it's easier just to apply a couple at a time, you can line it up a little easier as you go. So then you peel the tape off and there you go. There's the start of the rhinestones or sequences going around. It can be easy to have a, like a long piece of tape too, to help hold on to. So I stick them up there, gauge where it's going, apply the glue. Some of it is just playing and feeling it out, just kind of Hmm, does that look good? And have fun with it. So here we are. There's the 
bottom row. So that's how you put the rhinestones around the eye. Now the feathers, what I did for here was I, there's different sections. I'll show you with the yellow and the green. So I kind of put the stems flat and like close together. And then I applied glue straight across, like make a line and then go all the way around it. And it helps them stick together. And then if you're gonna use more, you can put on top uh, into that glue. I'm gonna do these first and then maybe work in a yellow one. These naturally wanna pull apart. So you kinda have to hold them together with the glue. I'm gonna go all the way around. Kinda just slowly squeezing the glue out of the gun. Now I'm just gonna kinda hold it together. This is where a clothespin comes in handy. I'm going to put a clothespin at the bottom and above it. Just try to hold it together a minute. So while this is drying, let me show you that. This was really fun to make. Working with feathers is a blast. Yay! Happy Mardi Gras! <laughs> in lieu of COVID, we made a matching mask because obviously we're gonna have to wear masks for these this year. Used an old pillowcase. And actually I used, these are my regular ones, but it, it came up a little high, came up high and I wanted it to be like, not so much going on. So I cut this way down. This was the pattern. So I just played around and cut, cut it deeper right here, but I left this the same. And that way that was less. And then, there we go. So you can have a lot of fun with feathers. When I started this mask, I was like, ooh, these are pretty just right here or just right here. And then I, I kept building sections. I'm like, well, let's put a little bit more. And then it just ended up being this very full headpiece and uh, really dig it. I think it's really cool. But you can even just do a few feathers off the side like this, this whole idea, just kind of one side or even in the middle or go to town like this. So if you want to do this many feathers, you have to, it does take time. So you have to glue sections together and try to keep them flat. Make sure they're not getting too bulky because you're going to need to attach them to here. So here's the inside. So I started in the middle and they, they've been glued down yeah, about an inch and a half or so, mostly all the way around. So they have something to brace on. Start in a section and then keep moving over. To tie it up, you can find some fun beads, buttons. This is actually a, a gem for maybe jewelry or such that was in my little bead jewel box. So after I put these on here, I'm like, ooh, we need something on here. And then, so I thought, let's just do some sequence going around the eye. Here's the one I did from last year for the gala at the workhouse, our annual fundraiser in November. So on this one, I did different shades of spray paint. So you could do something like this, where you do a gradient color. And then I worked in different knickknacks I had around, an old pin that was a little, you know, the back was broke, and buttons, uh, ivy leaf, a bead, more beads, some vinyl fabric. You can cut fabric out and make like interesting like strips and stuff. Here's another idea for you. You can take painter's tape make uh, a line and cover up part of the mask. And you don't want to press it too hard and you don't want to leave the tape on too long because it's paper, it, it does stick to it a little bit. So you peel it up really slow afterwards as well, but gently just kind of press the tape here and have it create this line for you on both sides. And then what I did, you can choose different colors, but I spray painted the yellow here and then I moved the tape and then spray painted green 
and purple here. But yeah, what would we do with this? Do we want to do some green feathers? Maybe. But I do have purple fabric. So maybe there's a way for me to incorporate the purple in a different way. If you want to make the fabric stiff, you can soak this in Liquitex. And you can even have it kind of accordion fold, pinch together, maybe hold it together with a clothespin here or something like that and then dip it in the Liquitex, then let it dry and it will be stiff. So let the good times roll and have some fun. Bring some creative energy into your, your life if you want and let it lift you up, let it free you and just, you know, basically make it fun. Have a good time. Like I said, the workhouse is having their first ever Mardi Gras event and it's running February 1st through the 13th. And there's lots of fun things going on. There's a parade on the 13th and, a com and comedy shows. Visit me at Perfect Mistakes on my Instagram and Facebook page, perfectmistakes.com. So yeah, have fun.